morning. How's everyone today? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Title of today's sermon is Light of the World. And I want to take a few minutes to read 14 verses in the book of John that's that are really central to our Christian faith and doctrine. So if you would, turn with me in your Bibles to John 1, beginning with the first verse. It says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him uh, was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and life was was the light of men. And light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Uh, the same came as a witness to bear witness to the light, all men, that all men through him might believe that he is not the light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world, he was in the world, and the world was made by him. The world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many received him, he gave them power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you, Father, uh, for this time uh, that we have together. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would just uh, draw us closer to you, Lord, that we might walk in your will in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, one of the striking features of the Gospel of John is the way that it, you know, the way that it depicts the life uh, and the ministry of Jesus Christ. The other Gospels usually tells us stories about Jesus, but this this is a little bit different. That that when the disciples they in, in the other Gospels the disciples were left to ask, "Who is this that the wind should obey him? Who is this who feeds the multitudes on a couple loaves uh, of, and a few fish?" But the Gospel of John, there's no doubt who Jesus is. I mean, there's no doubt who Jesus is because he tells us. And usually he does it with a statement that begins with the words, I am. I am. You know, you put him in a situation and he'll clarify who he is and, and what he has come to do. You put him in a desert surrounded by people with... Uh, that are persistently unsatisfied, and Jesus will say that I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and, uh, and, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You put him in the midst of people who are confused, people who ask, Who are you, Jesus? What makes you different from all the other gurus out there? Other rabbis are religious leaders. And Jesus says that I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever enters by me will be saved. Whoever comes in and goes out to find pasture. So you can put him at a graveside. You know, in the midst of people who are grief stricken. And Jesus will say, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die shall live. Or you can put them in the midst of people who feel disconnected by life's difficulties. And Jesus will say, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, will bear much. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. In the Gospel of John, there's one situation after another that Jesus defines himself as, this is who I am. Right? In, chapter, in the 8th chapter, the 12th verse, And then Jesus spoke unto them again, saying that I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. 
Do you feel like you, you ever felt like you've walked in darkness? Anybody? It's in the midst of darkness that he can ultimately lead us out. There is a way of escape. You know, it, it's his Holy Spirit that ultimately leads us. Uh, I, I know after my wife passed, I, I'd have to say that that was probably the darkest time in my life. I, I, don't, I didn't think I could know such darkness, uh, such grief. Uh, but I, I come to realize that God was there even though I didn't sense Him, I didn't feel Him at the time. I was just overwhelmed because my focus was, was not on Him, but my focus was on the grief and the pain. And the fact is, is that if we would look to Him, uh, ultimately we will find salvation. We will find the peace and the strength that we need in our daily lives. 1 John 1, 9, he says that I am the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. That he is the light for every man, every woman, every child. You know, it's at Christmas time that we celebrate the festival of lights. We string up and we have these, you know, Christmas trees and everything else. We illuminate our houses, right? Uh, many people even burn candles still. Uh, but we, we certainly burn up a lot of kilowatts. And why? Why? What does it represent? It represents the fact that Jesus was born. Amen. Amen. And it symbolizes the light that was given to us over 2,000 years ago. That Jesus turns to the church and He says that you are the light. And of course, that's not the gospel, that's, or that is the gospel of Matthew, it's not John. And when He says it, He's specifically talking about doing good works. You know, Jesus, uh, he, he says that we are to be the light of the world, and He adds, do not hide your light under a bushel. But here in the Gospel of John, Jesus never says that you are the light. Rather, He says that I am the light, right? And what does that mean? What does it mean to be the light? You can sit in a physics class, and you'll hear a lot of things about light. Science tells us that you know, that light is, is the ultimate constant in the universe. That it travels 186,000 miles per second. That light transmits energy. It transmits radiation and information. Or you can ask a third grader uh, to put a, be you know, a sunbeam through a prison and you'll see the spectrums of a rainbow. You know, physics can tell us a great deal about light, but one thing that physics can't tell us about light is that what is it what exactly does it mean by the word light what what is it we know we know it when we see it right but it's hard to explain unlike space and time light cannot be defined against anything else right light simply exists and what does that mean when Jesus says that I am the light of the world whatever it means it is an important concept in the Gospel of John. Two different times the writer depicts that Jesus is saying that I am the light. And on many occasions the writer affirms that the coming of Jesus into the world is not merely light shining, but light breaking through into darkness. It's as if creation is happening all over again. The writer says in John 1.3, he says, All things were made by Him, and without Him, not anything made was made. All things came into being through Him. And, and, and what has come into being is in Him was life, and it was the light of all people. That is, that Jesus of Nazareth was the primal energy of the Creator that is breaking anew. Not only in creation, but in God's creatures. That He gives us all light. It's a new beginning, it's a new birth, because a, a Savior was born. And all who received Him, who believe in His name, He gave them power to become sons of the living God. Amen. He gave us the power on those who would believe. I know I had a conversation you know, I, I, at different times you have conversations with people and they say, well, all you got to do is believe. And I'm 
The question is, is what does that believe mean? What does believe mean? Do you really believe? Because I, I, I honestly believe, and not to use the term, that if you, you will live out what you believe, most people don't want to see themselves as hypocrites, right? You're going to live out what you believe. And if you truly believe it upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to follow His teachings. Amen. You're going to yield yourself to His will in your life, whether it's what you want or not. The Bible says that you have been bought with a price. You are not your own. And let me tell you something, if you are your own, then you're not His. Is that the truth? Yeah. If you are all your own, if you think that you're just a, God's just going to be your little sugar daddy, <laughs> right? Wow. To do whatever you want, just to do your bidding, that somehow God's just sitting up there waiting for you to ask for something. Listen, He is, he is God Almighty. Amen. We are His servants, if indeed you are His servant. Yeah. And those who believe, He gave them to be, gave them power to become sons of God. Amen. Amen. I want to warn you that Jesus is the light of the world and that light comes into our darkness. Let's admit it. Sometimes we don't want we don't want the lights to come on, do we? Right? You meet somebody for the first time, do you ever present the worst part of you to them? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're always presenting the best part of yourself. You know? There's things that we hide. Yeah. You know, the coming of the light, it means that every single thing is exposed. It, it means, and it means that you have to deal with the truth. And let me tell you something, sometimes that can be very painful. Yeah. It can be painful. It can be uncomfortable. You ever start talking about Jesus in a, in a, in a group of people who are unbelievers? <laughs> Why on earth do they get so nervous and they don't want to hear that? They want to shut it down. Why? Because that light is shining forth into darkness. That light is shining forth into darkness. There was a priest in a Midwestern city who wanted to help the inner city kids. And so he wanted to see, you know, by the way, I was talking to a homeless guy last night on the square. Uh, and uh, the... He was talking about the, the, the ministries downtown, and, uh, you know, he was just really lifting up how, how, what a good job they were doing. Uh, and, and, and it just made me feel good to, to know that there are people out there that are reaching out. And he said he told this one lady, and he, he, he highly respected her, he told this one lady, he goes, you know what, if I get into heaven, it's going to be your fault. Oh. <laughs> I thought that that was something, right? I, I, I hope I'm at fault for that in some people's lives. Amen? Amen. At any rate, uh, you know, he, was, he, he, he wanted to, uh, for them to see something different, to change their, 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 their situation. So he took them on a bus, and he took them to see great beauty uh, uh, things. He took them down to the art museum to see paintings of masters, and he went to the symphony where they heard beautiful music, and they... They walked through these rows of homes uh, and that, had, that were done by creative architects, right? He showed them all this beautiful thing. And the, and the young priest showed these children the best and the brightest of every single thing that he knew, right? And when he got back, when they got back uh, and they, they took the kids home, one night one of those young boys went to his apartment and he set it on fire. And after they rescued him and, and, and they figured out what was going on, they, they asked him, he goes, why did you do this? Why did you do this? He says, I saw all of those beautiful things. And then I came home and I saw how ugly my world was. And I hated the ugliness. So I wanted to burn it down. The fact is, is that light can often shine into darkness that we don't want to expose. But I, I, I submit to you, it's better to bring things into the light now than it will be in the day of judgment. Amen. I would much rather be a little uncomfortable now than to stand and be judged for all eternity. You know, some light, it, it shines into the dark places and there's no telling what will happen. And when you, if you've ever seen the darkness, as you know, when the light comes in, it makes a strong contrast. 
it makes a strong contrast. And it's at that point, dark, at that point, darkness is a choice. We are the ones to choose whether we allow light in or not. Because light, light is much stronger than darkness. It is. There's no doubt about it. You can't add darkness into a room. The only thing you can do is remove the light. Right? So the fact is, is that light is, is, is stronger. And it's possible for the light of the world to shine on people. But there, you know, even though the light of the world's come into the world, it's, it's possible for people not to accept it. And this is a crisis for our world. John 3.16, he says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For if God, did not, if God sent not His own Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He goes on, he says, That he that believeth in Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the, the only name of the begotten Son of God. And listen to this. And this is the condemnation, that light came into the world, but men loved darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. Men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. People don't want to embrace the light because that light, again, it exposes. It's going to cause you... To, to either, you, you have a choice. And I, I, I honestly believe when people come into church and they hear the true gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, and, and you're, con you're convicted, you have a choice at that point. You can either repent and embrace the light, or what it does is it causes you to try to cover up even more. And it'll send you out the door, and you're less likely to come back. Because I know that there are people who are, ah, I don't know if I want to go to church today. Why? Because they, they love the darkness. They, they're holding on to certain things in their life. And it's at the point when you release that and you say, God, I'm giving you everything. Remember when we talked about the sower? Right? Yeah. And, and why is it that some produce 60, you know, or 30, 60, or 100 fold? How much of their heart are they willing to give? How much of yourself are you willing to yield to God? How much of that light are you willing to let come into your heart? It's when we, we get to the point where we will accept, accept the fact that he, 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 he isn't coming into our lives to destroy it. He's coming in to make us better. He's coming in to birth us something new. I thank God I am not the same person I used to be. Amen. I think about the person that I used to be, and I thank God I'm not that person anymore. And, and, and that's, that his, that's His desire for all of us, that we would come to know Him. You know, this light, it comes, and, and it's like I said, it's not just any light, but it's light of one that brings both grace and truth. He reveals truth to us. He shines forth His grace that we might have life and we have this rebirth. His truth is light that, exposed, that is, it both exposes and it also reveals. It can be very uncomfortable like I said, but His grace is the light that renews us. It just doesn't bring us and puts us down, but it renews us as well. It exposes, yet it also forgives. It's a light that's much stronger than any candle that you see in the dark. It is the light of the world. It is our Savior. John 1.14 says, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And this is what we celebrate, not just on Christmas, but this is what Christians celebrate every single day. And I want to encourage you not to lose sight during this time about what it is about, what Christmas is about. It isn't about just getting stuff or giving stuff. It is about a Savior who came into the world 
that we might be saved. So when you see Christmas lights, I want you to remember that. I want to... I'm going to end with this, this illustration. that There was this guy named Jerry, and he lived down the street from a certain little church. And he lived down there for about nine years. But no one in the church really knew much about him. They didn't know him very well, and he really didn't participate in the church or in the community. And one afternoon, his wife suffered a major stroke. And all that he could do was just sit and wait. He was powerless. So Jerry had three children, and he waited 39 days in the hospital. But he didn't wait there alone. Every single day for 39 days, somebody from the church stopped by to say hello. That two church members would drive his grandchildren back and forth to school, to ball games, to, to dances. Other church members, they mowed Jerry's yard, watered his plants. Another church member who worked with him uh, transferred some of his vacation pay so he could continue to receive a check. It was during this time uh, that the people from the church, they really got to know Jerry and they appreciated him very much. But on the day that Jerry's wife passed, you know, the people from church, they were there. And do you know what Jerry seen? Did you know what Jerry actually see, seen through that experience? He's seen the Word made flesh. The Bible isn't just a bunch of words that we just sit or some doctrine that we learn. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We are to personify that in our lives. We are to take the Word and make a difference in this world. People don't need to see a bunch of self-righteous Christians. What they need to see is true believers, true believers who will make a difference in this world. And I want to encourage you during this Christmas time not to think about, think about yourself or what you're going to get, but I want to encourage you to sacrifice a little for somebody who is in need during this season. Amen. Amen. I'm going to end with that, and um, and I just I pray that uh, that we all draw a little closer to the Lord, that we allow His light to come into our lives, that we yield our lives even more and more to His will as opposed to our own. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word today. Father, I know it wasn't long, but it doesn't need to be. Father, I pray that you would just, um, that, that, that your light would shine into our lives. That not only will you reveal and expose to us, but Father, that you would forgive and that you would, you would allow that light to shine out of us to this world. I pray that we will not hide our, our light under a bushel, but that we would go out into the world, that we would be the word made flesh, that we would take your word, Father, and, and, and live it every single day. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.